March looks like it's going to be a pretty quiet month for Switch releases overall, but there are a handful of really interesting games that are coming out in March, especially in the first half of the month. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the games that I'm most excited about that are coming out in March, but let me know in the comments what you're excited about. I'll leave links for all the games we're talking about today in the description below. But before we get started, if you like Nintendo content, new stuff and retro stuff, consider subscribing. We put out brand new Nintendo content every week. All right, let's check out some games. Brock the Investigator, releasing March 1st. Built as a punch and click beat em up, Brock the Investigator tells the story of Brock, a private detective and former boxer who starts to unravel the truth behind his wife's mysterious death. Developed and published by Cowcat, the game originally released in August 2022 for the PC, but now it's making its console debut. What's really cool about this game is that you can play how you want. If you prefer playing a classic point and click adventure, you can do that and you can totally slip over the combat. The art's really nice too. The character designs are based on 80s and 90s cartoons and I think the game really nails it. The game is fully voice acted, has multiple endings, and there's enough content to keep you busy for about 15 to 20 hours for a single playthrough. Rune Factory 3 Special, releasing March 2nd. Originally released on the DS back in 2011, a remastered version of Rune Factory 3 is coming to the Switch in March. If you've ever played a Rune Factory game before, the plot's going to be familiar. Your character shows up in a small town with amnesia, and in order for him to get his memory back, he has to farm, fight monsters, explore dungeons, and romance the town's 11 eligible bachelorettes. The game's been given some of the same updated treatments that Room Factory 4 Special received for its release on Switch a while back. There are new 3D models for the characters, improved graphics, and some post-game content called Newlywed Mode. No By Heart, releasing March 9th. No By Heart is the latest Switch release from Ice Pick Lodge. The game was originally released in February 2022 to a lot of critical acclaim, but later this year it's making its debut on Switch. It's an action adventure indie game that follows Misha. He's stuck in a dead end job and living a monotonous life until his school crush comes back to town. The game's only about five hours long, but the story packs quite the emotional punch. I've been playing through No By Heart, and I've got my full review coming up soon. Huge thanks to Ice Pick Lodge for sending over a review copy. Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, releasing March 9th. Time for another remaster. Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is the fourth installment in Koei Tecmo's Fatal Frame series. It was originally released in 2008 for the Wii, but it was a Japanese exclusive. So for most of the world, this new remaster will be our first time experiencing Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Fatal Frame is a popular Japanese horror series that takes Ghostbust into the next level with an old school camera obscura. Fatal Frame games mix third person exploration with first person shooters, except you're using this camera instead of a gun. I played through a Fatal Frame Made in a Blackwater a few years ago on the Switch and I really enjoyed it. If you're into survival horror, give Fatal Frame a shot, so to speak. Session Skate Sim, releasing March 9th. I grew up loving the Tony Hawk games, but Session's taking skateboarding a slightly different direction. Rather than the over-the-top gameplay that the Tony Hawk games were known for, Session is a skateboarding simulator inspired by the street skating of the 90s. And the entire game, from the physics to the controls, have been focused on one thing, realism. Each analog stick actually controls one of your feet in the game, so you're going to have to actually learn how to skate to play this game. There's also a heavy emphasis on filmmaking too, which is cool. You can change the camera's lens, edit your clips, and try out different filters so you can really get that, that 90s skate video aesthetic. Trails to Azure releasing March 14th. Trails to Azure was originally released on the PSP back in 2011, but in March, it's coming to the Switch. The game's the sequel to Trails from Zero, which was released on the Switch in 2022. Personally, I find it hard to keep track of the entire Trails series, which itself is part of this bigger Legend of Heroes series. What's important to know here is that Trails to Azure isn't the kind of JRPG that you can just jump into without playing the other games in the series. 
So if you haven't played the previous games, hold off on Trails to Azure. Which reminds me, hey, NIS America, put the Trails in the Sky trilogy on Switch already. Bayonetta Origins, Cerveza and the Lost Demon, releasing March 17th. This is an entirely new installment in the Bayonetta franchise, and when we first got a look at it, it really divided some fans. You play as a much younger version of Bayonetta, Cerveza, and her stuffed toy that just so happens to be possessed by a demon. Rather than focusing on the combat that the series is known for, Bayonetta Origins is more about controlling Cerveza and Cheshire at the same time to solve puzzles. Whatever you think about it, you can't deny it, this game has an awesome watercolor storybook aesthetic. It really looks amazing. And that's my list for March. You probably have a few other games that I didn't mention, so let me know what they are in the comments below. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing.